Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have got a special guest. So you can meet my baby, little Sophie. She joined us on January the 25th. Um, and she's, as I'm filming this, she is two weeks old. And yeah, we're both doing really well. And she is just so cute. Like I know I'm biased, but I just can't get enough, can I? So I thought today I would do a bit of a birth story, how everything went. It was a planned C-section and it's a very positive experience that we had. So I just wanted to share that with you in case you've got a C-section coming up maybe um, and you're kind of worried or you just want to know what to expect because I know, I know before giving birth to my first baby, I was quite nervous about having a C-section and I just didn't know what to expect. So yeah, I thought I would talk a bit about that and then share how we're doing postpartum and please excuse my voice if you can hear that i feel like i have to do a disclaimer in every video i'm going to film because i've got this cold that my son has kindly brought from school um so yeah the whole family got this cold she seems fine she was a bit congested um like had some runny nose but she's fine now so i'm hoping it stays that way because i just did not want her to get you know a fever or anything but yeah thankfully she's fine so we planned a c-section because i had so wait with my first baby i had a c-section because he was breech so he'd never turned head down and yeah so i already had a c-section which makes it a bit trickier for your next delivery like you know there are risks with having another c-section and there are risks with having a v-bag as well like a vaginal birth after a c-section so i just kind of went through all of that with my doctor and um, she was very like nice about it like she didn't pressure me into either of those um she let me decide on my own and yeah in my case and with everything like all the history that i have going on i just wanted to have another c-section because to be honest i just wanted to have as smooth of a delivery as possible like after everything we've been through just the thought of trying to go natural and then having an emergency c-section or just having complications i just I couldn't bear the thought of that so i think that was one of the reasons why i wanted another c-section so that's what we decided and we booked it or booked it yeah so they booked it for me and actually i was getting a bit nervous because i was i was nearly 39 weeks pregnant and they were telling me they were going to send me you know a letter with my c-section date and everything um are you getting a bit hungry sorry let me just pop her on the boob there we go that's better I hope I don't flash anyone but yeah so I was expecting them to send me a letter with my c-section date yeah, so they said they would book it um for after 39 weeks that's the kind of the earliest that they do it and they try to do it around 39 weeks because I think they would rather not have you go into labor so you have to go for an emergency one I actually called the hospital at around 37 I think weeks or 38 weeks because I hadn't got my date yet and I was getting a bit concerned you know they might have forgotten about me um but they didn't they just said that they don't like to give um too far in advance notice because they might have a lot of emergency ones and then they don't want to disappoint you you know to have to cancel so yeah they actually called me two days before my c-section and and they said you know okay come tomorrow for your pre-op like they do a blood test um I think that's about it. They just did a blood test just kind of before my c-section and then two days from the call I would go in in the morning to have my c-section So they booked me in um, on the morning session because they do a morning session and an afternoon one So at my hospital um, I was booked to go in to be at the hospital at 7 a.m. And they said I should stop eating at midnight um, you know the night before the surgery and they also gave me um, some medicine, it was just kind of that antacid, I think, to reduce the acid that you have in your stomach. So it, you know, um, <clears throat> it reduces the risks of you getting sick during the operation. I think that's what the, the, those are for. Um, so I took one of those at 10 p.m. at that night and then I took another one the morning right before going to the hospital. And then between midnight and morning I could have, you know, just water. Um, and then I was supposed to stop drinking any water at 7 a.m. I think and it was actually such an emotional kind of evening before and just the morning going because I feel like it's so different when you have when you already have a child and you're going to have your second one or maybe your next one as well because I was just I put Victor to bed um, that night because I knew I probably wouldn't be able to for a while you know obviously going into hospital and then having a newborn and it was just so emotional putting him to sleep for the last time as my only child even now thinking about it it makes me emotional but 
yeah i knew he was also worried like he was with my mom because my mom came to visit us i think 10 ish days of her life um and so she was here right before she was born which was so helpful because obviously we needed someone to stay with victor while we were at the hospital and i just knew victor was a bit concerned and just you know he's never without us obviously except for when he's at school um so i think it was just a big thing for him um and he kept asking why you know why does daddy have to go to the hospital why can't he just stay home with me and i, I can go by myself to the hospital to have the baby so so yeah I, it just kind of broke my heart a little bit but obviously you've got to do what you've got to do and he was absolutely fine it was just kind of a, i think a stressful day for him just being away from us thankfully he was in school for most of the day so i don't think it was too bad but so in the morning at 7 a.m we were at the hospital and they just kind of put us in this room with you know it had beds but it was just kind of that triage room i think and there was another couple who were having um a c-section that morning too so it was just the two of us booked for that morning and they just came and gave us gown like a gown to change in so they gave me a hospital gown to change in and compression socks which i had to keep on for quite a while i know they're quite big here on um on these things to avoid i think a blood clot in your legs i think it's called deep vein thrombosis or something they actually didn't really do much for this back in romania when i had my first uh baby with a c-section they didn't give me compression socks or anything so um yeah that was new to me and i'm not sure if they do this in all the countries it might be different depending on the country but here they are quite serious about that so they gave me compression socks um which are so hard to put on i had my husband put them on because especially when you're pregnant and you've got a huge belly it's hard to bend and then a doctor came and just kind of assessed me so they looked at my um tummy they kind of wanted to see her position she was um still head down sorry i'm gonna have to keep sipping on this because I keep um, having to cough. The anesthesiologist also came in to introduce himself and just kind of, you know, tell you all the risks and everything because they have to. Um, they get you to sign consent forms. And yeah, they just kind of went through my history again briefly. And yeah, they just give you all the risks of having a C-section, which it was funny because they were just, you know... Oh, that was a big burp. That was a big burp. Just can't get enough of her newborn cuddles. Yeah, so it's funny how they come and give you that whole list of rules. And then she was like, oh yeah, now you can just relax here until it's time to go into theater. And then my husband and I were like, oh yeah, now I can relax. <laughs> we were also quite anxious. I mean, you know, it's a big thing, the birth, and you just want them to be healthy. You want everything to go okay. Are you ready for the next booby? We've just had an outfit change. <laughs> or she did. Didn't we? Because you had a big poop explosion. Yep. You ready for more milkies now oh she's looking for the milkies yeah and then i think they called us to go to theater i think it was nearly 11 a.m by that time so we went in um the first thing they did is they put the cannula in my um <clears throat> arm they tried this one first they had trouble putting it in and then they did the other hand and they finally got it in uh, they always struggle to get the cannulas in my hands i think i have tiny veins or something and then they do the spinal Thing in your back which honestly it sounds so much worse than it is with both c-sections i kind of expected it to be really bad or something it just sounds so awful doesn't it but you just kind of have to hunch um forwards which is a bit tricky because obviously you have a huge bump in the way but they do help you and my husband was with me the entire time which was really nice with my uh, firstborn he wasn't there at all um in the theater um but here in the uk he can be in there with me which was really nice it's just kind of you know nice to have a familiar face when you're in there and you're a bit anxious because obviously it's a big thing to go through um so he was with me he was holding my hand while they did this and um what they do is they do a first kind of injection in your back which is the anesthetic so they do an exercise you a bit before giving you the actual spinal thing and uh, to be honest the first thing they give you the numbing thing um it felt like a tiny pinch like you know when you go to get a jab in your arm it kind of felt like that so it wasn't too bad and that's honestly all i felt and then when they went to do the actual spinal anesthesia like the full-on thing um i barely felt anything it doesn't really hurt or at least in my case both times it was absolutely fine like i barely felt anything with that and then and it's a super quick as well and then they have to lie you down really quick after because um your leg like from here on down it gets really numb like very quickly they put up the big 
you know, curtain sheet so you can't see. My husband was at my hat, which was really nice. And the anesthesiologist was really lovely too. He kept, you know, checking me and asking if I'm feeling okay. Oh, and they also put some things, like they stick some things on your chest. Or they stick mine on my back because I wanted to have skin on skin with her. I think they check your pulse and just kind of your vitals, I guess, to make sure you're okay. Um, and then they basically start doing the operation, which it doesn't really, f like, I, you can't feel anything. I, I could feel some, like, moving me around and just kind of some pulling and tugging and things like that. But it's not painful at all. It's a very, very weird sensation, but it's definitely not painful or anything. And yeah, it was actually quite quick after that, getting her out. Um, I think she was born at 11.17 a.m., um, so quite quickly it was just so special like the whole vibe in the operating room was so relaxed you know the doctors and the nurses were joking around and they were asking us questions just to kind of make us feel more comfortable and it was just a really nice experience just kind of really calm and yeah so they got her out and the first thing I noticed is that she had a full head of hair just like my firstborn uh, Victor did and so they brought her to me just to show her and then they just took her on the side for a second with my husband to to um, weigh her and to kind of I think clear her passive like her nose and things like that to make sure he's, she's okay she was crying so I knew that it was okay like it's such a weird feeling when they first when they're first born like when they come out you just want to hear them crying because obviously that's a good sign and then you want to know that they're okay that they're healthy and yeah so my husband was on, on the side with her just kind of getting her checked and getting her um swaddled up a bit because obviously she would be cold um and then they put her on me <laughs> She basically never left my side after that, which was really, really nice. And it was definitely a different experience um, to how it was back in Romania. Yeah, she was just with me the entire time, which was really lovely. Um, and yeah, she was on my chest the whole time that they basically finished the surgery. You know, just kind of getting the placenta out and stitching you up and everything. And honestly, I couldn't feel anything after that. or I, I couldn't really pay attention to anything. She was on me and I was just staring at her basically. Such a surreal moment. I don't know, after years of dealing with infertility, if you guys know, if you've been here for a while, you probably already know. And just kind of, you know, having miscarriages and struggling to get pregnant again. It was just, honestly, it makes me so emotional thinking about it. And I just feel so grateful to have her in my arms. Yeah, I don't want to cry. I've just been so emotional. I think it's all the hormones as well, obviously, uh, postpartum. But yeah, I'm just feeling so grateful and, and happy that she's here. and. She's perfectly healthy, there's nothing wrong with her and it's just the entire pregnancy, I feel like, you know, going through everything. Not that I was expecting something to go wrong, but I was just worried something might go wrong. Um, and so seeing her and seeing that she's healthy and everything's good, it was just such an amazing moment. And yeah, so after they finished, you know, the surgery, they just moved me around a bit, just kind of changing everything that was dirty. Um, and they put her in my arms because after the surgery was finished I could actually hold her um, and they wheeled me back she was on me the whole time they wheeled me back to the recovery room and I was there under observation for I don't even know a few hours I think and then they moved me to the actual like ward where all the mummies and the babies are but yeah and in, in the recovery room it was just me and my husband and I think there was just one other person like a few beds down but there, it wasn't too busy at all I also had the nurse come and help me or the midwife i can't remember she came and helped me latch her on which was really nice and she was on my boob forever like for a, more than an hour i think just kind of starting that breastfeeding and it was such a nice experience and then i was moved to the ward and yeah, she was with me like by my bedside the entire time now i obviously i couldn't move in the beginning they had me get up as i think about six hours after i gave birth oh i also had the catheter in which they put in after they anesthetize you so you don't feel anything and then after six hours they also gave me some toast and tea which was really lovely but then I ended up throwing it up 
Um, I think it was still from the anesthesia. And then I also had shivering, which is also an, a side effect of, you know, coming off the anesthesia. Yeah, so they left my catheter in overnight. And then they wait for you to wee on your own, basically, to make sure, you know, everything's okay. And we were both doing really well. So the next day, they basically discharged us. So we were in hospital a bit over 24 hours. Or actually a bit more, because they discharged us kind of in the afternoon. But yeah, one thing that was interesting is that I had to have injections for 10 days um, just to prevent blood clots in your legs aside from the compression socks as well and it's apparently something they do here they never did this back in Romania um, I'm not sure if it's something new maybe they do it now because obviously I had my first baby over five years ago so maybe they changed that but yeah I had to have injections in my tummy which was not very fun they actually weren't too bad it was just kind of the thought of it and the anticipation of having them done every day um, that I didn't like but 10 days went by quite quickly and my husband was thankfully really good at giving them to me because I don't think I could have done that by myself but yeah let me know if you've had a c-section if you had to do those because I found that you know interesting I didn't expect that but yeah now I'm quite mobile I can move around easily so I don't really need to wear the socks anymore either as I said I'm now two weeks postpartum as well like over two weeks um I do still get some pain in my you know incision here and there especially at the end of the day when I think I'm more tired as well but yeah I'm feeling quite good otherwise she's doing really well as well um at day five when we went to our midwife checkup um she was back at her birth weight actually a bit over that um so she was born at 3.15 kilograms and yeah I think I'm losing my voice now so <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video I hope you've enjoyed meeting baby Sophie here and yeah I will see you all in my next video bye guys